Meet Daniel. Daniel is a tetraplegic patient. In this video, we are going to demonstrate the operation of an independently operable respiratory therapy station for tetraplegic patients. The inspiration behind this is that tetraplegic patients are paralyzed from the neck down, which means that their diaphragm and their intercostal muscles, which control their breathing, are very weak. This means that they can't breathe as deeply as people normally can, and this leads to the formation of phlegm plugs in their lung airways. This buildup can not only be a breeding grounds for infection, but it can also lead to the formation of deadly blockages that restrict oxygen flow in the lungs. In order to combat this, we have made a respiratory therapy station that can allow these tetraplegic patients to engage in daily respiratory therapy as well as monitor their progress over time. Our device is a two-part system which consists of a drive-up station that the tetraplegic patients can uh, move their motorized wheelchair up to and as a part of this drive-up station we have a positive expiratory pressure device and a spirometer for gauging uh, airflow out of the patient as well as a program that will be loaded onto the uh, desktop computer at the station. Here we have our control unit box which interfaces between the joystick as well as the motorized wheelchair LED array. And what this box consists of is a Arduino microcontroller, a battery to power the microcontroller, and a Bluetooth module. And so what this control unit box allows for is it allows for signals to be passed either from the joystick to the motorized wheelchair LED array, as we can see here. Or alternatively, with the push of a button, the signals can be sent to the Bluetooth module, which will then communicate those signals through Bluetooth to the respiratory station so that the user can then use their alternative control unit to control mouse movement and navigate through the program we have written for this respiratory station. The program can be run in either tutorial mode or not tutorial mode. The caregiver will have to input the patient's name if it's, if, if it's the patient's first time using the program on the computer. Once the caregiver adds the patient as a new user to the system, their name will appear in the drop-down menu in the select user indicator. A data file can then be created and the session can begin. So the patient will begin the therapy evaluation session. During this initial pre-therapy evaluation stage, they will breathe normally for 10 seconds. This will establish a baseline and calculate some basic parameters. Then they will engage in forced breathing, which will allow the system to calculate FVC, or forced vital capacity, and FVV1, or forced expiratory volume in one second. These are two important parameters that physicians use when assessing airway health and clearance. During the loosening mucus stage, the user will use a positive expiratory pressure or PEP device in order to loosen the mucus in their airways. This is a purely mechanical device that generates vibrations when the patient is breathing into it. These vibrations are then sent into the user's airways and cause any mucus if present to loosen. The next stage is the autogenic drainage stage. In this stage, the user will follow a guided respiratory therapy session involving breathing techniques that engage different areas of the lungs. The user will be able to view their breathing volume curve on a real-time chart along with thresholds specific to their respiratory condition that were calculated based on their initial airway evaluation. Depending on where the breathing volume curve is positioned with respect to the thresholds, the user will be engaging their lower, mid, or upper lungs. As they shift the breathing upwards, any mucus that has previously been loosened by the PEP device will be able to migrate up through the airway until it can be coughed out. The patient can either follow time guidance or end the therapy session early by pressing the stop button when finished. The next stage is the post-therapy airflow evaluation stage. This is the same as the pre-therapy evaluation stage. The user will engage in 10 seconds of normal breathing and then engage in the forced expiratory breathing, which will calculate the same parameters as the beginning. These parameters will then be able to be compared to the previous parameters 
as well as previous sessions that have been completed on this computer system. Once the patient has completed the post-therapy evaluation, they can view their breathing waveform on the graph. They can also select a previous file from the drop-down menu in order to overlay a breathing waveform from a previous session. This screen will also show the FBC and FVV1 calculations from both sessions. Once the patient is completed with viewing previous data sessions, they can end the program. The software is very useful for comparing data sessions between different runs of the program so the patient can assess long-term long-term success of the therapy. Some of the aspects of the device that we are most proud of is the setup of the Bluetooth module to send joystick data to the computer to control mouse movements and button clicks, as well as the conversion of the spirometry data into real-time flow rate and volume traces. It is our hope that the use of the device will provide tetraplegic patients with greater independence and ownership of their respiratory health and will improve their long-term progress. Thank you for watching our video.